What's up? Um, okay, so this is going to be one of uh, my last uh, streams before GPLA. It's coming, it's coming in quick. It's coming in quick. Um, this is uh, what I've been liking so far. Um, I think I'm going to be playing Cross and Grip instead of Hercule, Hercules Recall. Uh, there's been a pretty big uptick in Blood Moon decks lately, and I feel like Cross and Grip is going to be just overall a better card. It also makes me very excited about playing the Fourth Forest over the Canopy. Um, we'll see if this hurts my ability to cast Path to Exile in, in matchups where I want to, particularly Grixis Shadow. Um, we'll see how that works out. Um, but the second Explosives has, has been pretty good. Has been pretty good. Um, I feel like this is what I want to uh, try. The only two things that I might want to change would be going back to Hercules uh, in place of this Cross and Grip and putting the Tusk in the main over the Explosives. This would be the two, the two things, uh, the two little changes that I would consider. Uh, but besides that, I feel like I am going to be, to be running uh, this list or something very, very similar to this at GPLA. So let's see how that works out. <clears throat> Chameleon Colossus seems a little bit narrow, maybe? It's just so good on the Shadow matchup. I expect that, having won the latest GP, I, I would expect people to be... to be running Shadow. But yeah, we'll see how this works out. <sighs> Come on, people. Play some modern. By the way, if people are still wondering about this card, um, what's up, DNT? Uh, welcome. Uh, if you're wondering about this card, I recommend you check out, you check out yesterday's stream. Squirmit, hello there. It's been a while. Eesh. Wow, this hard is so this hand is so close to the nuts. This hand is so close to being insane. Uh, we don't know what we're playing against, so we're gonna mulligan. Uh this is fine. If we're playing against blue white, we're gonna be very sad, but uh, we're playing against Phoenix. Uh Delver? What the fuck? Slumpty Dumpty, Drum Hunter, man, everybody's here. That's awesome. Thanks for hanging out. Glad you were able to catch the stream live. Manalik. Good to know about this one. Definitely good to know about that one. Um you're you're always welcome to do to do some lurking uh square bit. You know that, right? Just gonna have a little cookie here. Hope you guys don't mind. Well my opponent resolves their serum visions. They top top? Damn. The dream. Don't have a bolt. Ugh. This is just annoying. That is just annoying. Well, Slumpty Dumpty, if you are looking for content on this deck this is the place for you this is definitely the place for you um do i run this into mana leak nah I 
I mean, I can, I can find Cavern, I can find Blue Pack. This guy, this guy is kind of beating me down. Mm -hmm. Now I feel like I run this into my league. Got me, opponent. <clears throat> oh, we, we're always primed and ready on this stream. That you, you should not worry about. That's that's something shitty about playing against uh, blue red decks. Like, look at my opponent's mana base right now. Look at what my opponent is playing, and I will be forced into bringing in reclamation stage uh, for the sideboarded games. I have not seen a I have not seen a, a blood moon or, or even a fetch land yet. Uh, but I just cannot afford to not have answers to Blood Moon, <laughs> so I'm I'm just going to be forced to to find like a freaking to bring in a um, stupid Reclamation Sage, which might be just like straight up unplayable in the matchup. But I need to have answers to Blood Moon. What would be really nice here? It would be either for my opponent to tap out. Or for us to draw engineered explosives, because if we stop my opponent's clock, um, then we just buy a ton of time, and we can, you know, try to find a cavern of souls or something like that. <sighs> Maybe a naturally drawn titan. Um, yeah, I I need to. <sighs> yeah. Unfortunately, I need I need to play into mana leak, which is terrible. I know, but my opponent has a second mana leak. I am just going to be very very sad, which is very likely that they have it. Even remand would be terrible here. Th yeah, this is this is probably the game right here. Um. That remand was probably game winning. Yeah, I'm still on the two main deck explosives list. Yeah. Also, my opponent has been like, they drew three lands and that's it. <laughs> that's so good for a Delver deck. That's just, that's just ridiculous for a Delver deck to draw like exactly three lands. No more, no less. Yeah, so this is when they realize that they they can actually tap out this turn if they want to. It's so unfortunate that we like didn't draw cavern or anything like that, so we are kind of, we were kind of forced into like slamming that titan into counter magic, and they did have it. If you want to see the list, it's right there. There are there are two things in particular that I'm trying to figure out before the GP. Number one, Terramander. Okay, so they have lethal for next turn. Yeah, I th I'm dead, right? Yeah, I'm dead. Okay. All right, so third explosives is coming in. Cavern is coming in. Thank you very much. Third explosives, walking ballista, of course. Uh, Rex Sage. As I was saying, I kind of have to bring in Rex Sage. Uh, 
Ghost Quarter, probably Colony Garden can come out as well. I doubt that the that I'm gonna be doing much chum blocking. Mm. Now the question is this and this. I feel like I wouldn't want the full four path, but I would want some amount of them, maybe two. Uh, particularly if my opponent is playing young PZ. Which is very possible they might. Mm hmm, we got a follower. Fellman, thank you very much for that follow. I can probably take out a couple of scouts and bring in a couple of paths. Try something like this. Again, I'm expecting Blood Moon, so having access to path in order to in order to find my basics, it can be pretty big game too. Maybe I should side out all scouts or all amulets. Lure Delver, though. Some people, huh? Playing Delver in modern in 2019. Crazy, crazy. <sighs> Taking their sweet ass time to side war two. All right, let's go. Okay. Okay. So this um, this hand can buy quite a bit of time between this uh, trinket mage uh, being being able to fetch uh, explosives is nice. Uh, I think two is correct, and I think it's possible that we might be uh, that playing three might be correct as well. We are against blue red delver. I know. <laughs> I I just said that. Yes, I just said we are against Blue Red Delver. Now, what land to play next is interesting. Uh, we already have the cavern, so this is nice. No, they were running. They were running uh, Terramanders. So I I am putting them in more of um more of a like young PC um Delver kind of thing. <laughs> they went uh top bottom. Mm. I guess here we play forest. And pass. Playing out the amulet so my opponent um, is, you know, enticed to like a braid in it this turn, which would allow me to like play the trinket mage and find an engine and explosives. <clears throat> Alright, this is nice. Uh, this uh, suggests no moon. Look at that. Look at that. My opponent playing exactly into my plan. Love it. So now we're going to fetch... Uh, explosives, I think. Ballista is pretty nice, too. Yeah, I, I like Ballista better than explosives, actually. That's a snappy. Two, three, four, five, six, seven. And they have one, two, three, four spells. <clears throat> That's a thing in the ice. Uh, 
That's pretty sweet. Okay. Um, hmm. One, two, three, four. So they are still pretty far away. I mean, they didn't stop the clock, right? Because they know I have the Ballista, so they can't really block here. So they haven't really stopped the clock. Yep. <laughs> That's what I thought. Got him. Uh, so we're going to put this on Giant. It's not like my opponent can do anything about it. And then we're going to play a Ballista on 2. Blessed Alliance? Uh, I mean, I wouldn't bring it in against Phoenix. Uh, we're talking about a deck that, you know, is playing recur uh, recurrent threats, so I wouldn't I wouldn't bring Blessed Alliance against Phoenix, it's pretty bad. Against Shadow, it's kind of dope. The fact that you can, make, uh, you can make them gain life means that you can actually kill multiple Shadows if they manage to do that. And against Burn, like, our matchup is already pretty damn good already, so I don't think I would want to be bringing in stuff against Burn. I don't really see the reason for doing that. Uh, next turn, I think I'm gonna be playing Sanctuary, Bouncing Gemstone, and then on the following turn, Slamming and Titan. My opponent seems like it's trying to do too many things at the same time. Maybe they have like a transformation of sideboard thing going on or whatever. Uh, yes. Tusk is not bad, uh, but I think it's better to resolve Titan next turn. One, two, three, four, five. If they play a moon... <sighs> oh, no fear, opponents. No fear. Being at 22, I'm not particularly afraid of this thing in the ice. Also, this thing in the ice means that my opponent cannot play out like any Terramanders or like Delvers or stuff like that. So... I'm not hating my position right here. This is kind of nice. They get to... I mean, nice for them, I mean, right? And maybe it's a reason for me not to attack with this. Because this, uh, I could have traded next turn. But on the other hand, like, if my opponent uh, is flipping thing in the ice and attack... If they attack with this, that means that they are not attacking with this, so that's cool. <clears throat> yeah, so they are just going to flip the, the thing in the ice here. Vapor snag. <laughs> sure. One, two, three, four, five. Hmm. Bold me. Okay. So they have a snappy in hand. Great. Right, if they do nothing. Yeah, okay, so they do nothing, so I'm just gonna play an encounter World Titan. And we're gonna get Kalni and Vesuva. Oh, I sighted out the Kalni Garden. Well, that was, that was dumb. I didn't expect thing in the ice. Damn it. Alright, so we're gonna do Vesuva plus... Uh, 
Vesuva plus Garrison. And we are going to bounce Cavernous Souls. Sergio, how you doing? Thanks for hanging out. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Vapor Snag. Uh, if they have a Bolt, I die. This is shitty. Oh, they have the snap in hand. Well, yeah. Also, knowing they have a snap in hand and they have a vapor snag in the in the graveyard, I should have gone for the Thrak Tusk anyway. Because my opponent could, yeah. Okay, so they got me. Uh, yeah, I lost this game because, well, uh, I my opponent showed me Delvers game one and they sideboarded into Thing in the Ices. Uh, Colony Garden is very important against Thing in the Ice. And I cited it out because it's terrible against Delver. Fair enough, fair enough. My opponent. Uh, what, what is this? Okay. That was weird. Kind of a shitty way to start the stream, but... Also, my opponent's deck seemed very bad. <laughs> and I'm trying to figure out the last couple of slots for uh, before the GP. And the, the, the two slots in question are uh, Thraktusk in the main over the second explosives. Uh, and... Uh, this is an okay hand. I'm going to keep this, especially on the play. Um, and in the sideboard, the... The um, cross on grip over the Hercules uh, over the Hercules recall. I mean the recall over the cross on grip, I guess. Play amulet pass. Next turn we can steer into something, or we can naturally draw Susa and you know be great at this game. Coalition Relic would also be very nice. <clears throat> we have a lot of very good draws here. Uh, also, if we steer into second amulet, we have a turn 3 Titan too, which is cool. We don't have the kill because we naturally drew the Sun home. Uh, I feel like Cyclonic Rift is also a consideration. The thing is that, uh, like, the main reason I'm trying to play Hercules Recall... Uh, the main reason I'm trying to play Hercules Recall is because of the wear matchup. And usually uh, the, the people playing uh, wear Prison are going to try to uh, Tech Edge... Uh, tech Edge uh, Crucible lock you. So making it to 7 mana is, is not easy in that matchup. Uh, so that's pretty problematic. Is this Infect? Uh, I guess it's either Infect or... Spirits? Could be Spirits. In any case, the list is gonna be the Nuts. So we're getting that. Hopefully my opponent taps out for something this coming turn. We can play the list for two. Uh, well, that that basically confirms what my opponent's on, and I'm definitely killing this noble hark. Forget about it. Uh, oish, that's nice. So I guess my opponent doesn't have a spell queller. Also, I don't know, uh, Snyder, uh, Affinity won the latest, uh, like the, um, what's his name? It won the, the latest event uh, in Magic Online. 
and um, basically Hercules Recall is insane against Affinity, while Cyclonic Rift is pretty much unplayable. Same thing with Hardened Scales. Uh, Hardened Scales, I don't, I think literally Hardened Scales cannot beat Hercules, Hercules Recall, while again uh, the other deck is gonna be very very bad. The other card is gonna be very very bad. The no, it wasn't the challenge. It was. Um, it wasn't challenge, it was ah, the MCQ something, right? Uh, they posted it as Magic uh, Modern Finals in in the um, yeah, uh, I don't oh, this is a really awkward draw Because I really want to put a counter on the Ballista and shoot this down. So next turn we can freely Pact. It really feels like I'm going to be winning this game regardless. So I think I can afford to play this out and do this. And just bounce the, the Sanctuary itself. Put a counter, serve, take two, now we're gonna kill this. And uh, thinking of third relic, uh, I don't think I'm gonna be running a third one for this GP simply because I, I don't, I, I ordered two copies and I think that I'm not gonna be able to get, to get another one, so. I don't think I'm going to be running a 3 at this GP. What? Is this an upkeep company? Why are they doing this on upkeep? This makes no sense to me. Exactly, like... <laughs> why are you doing this like this? What? Uh huh. Well, this is actually kind of good for them. I mean, it's not insane. But it's okay. I'm playing two right now. Two relics. Uh, I guess they just didn't copy anything because they uh, they probably tried to copy this, but they cannot because uh, they, they cannot copy the same thing that enters the, the battlefield at the same time as the Phantasmal image. Um, just like uh, the same thing, we cannot copy the land that comes into play with Vesuva. Uh, so I guess I'm going to flash this in. Which allows me to put a counter. Uh, though I think this is better than putting a counter. Alright. Pass the turn. <laughs> Maybe they copied the list. Yeah, that's that's the other that's the other option. That is the other option. Alright, so they got the the Drog Skull Captain combo. We have a ton of life to work with. Packed for Titan. I think we're going to ex uh, to try to set up an explosive for the next turn. Do we have enough mana? So we pay for Pact, we transmute. Uh, oh, we don't have a third color of mana. That's awkward. We transmute, pay for Pact, transmute. We're gonna have a one, two, three, four mana. Okay, so we're gonna be, I guess, setting up for the following turn. Still gaining life, so I don't think I'm gonna be dead. Mm. 
But if I bounce the mine, this will come into play tapped. What? Remorseful Clerk? I guess. So they haven't had Spell Queller the whole game. Let's see if they drew it here. Transmute. One, two, three, four, five, six. Oh, they need to block this, actually. They are forced to block this. Because otherwise I can double strike it. So we're gonna do Vesuva plus Boros. Copying Crossroads. One, two, three, four, five, six, ten plus three. Gonna be bouncing the Vesuva. I haven't made any land drops yet, so yeah, so they're probably gonna make a token. And that's what's going to chomp here. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think I think we should be good here. What? <laughs> Are you sure you want to give me my amulet back? I'll take it. I will take it. They also know that I have Tolaria West in hand. Not the tightest play from my opponent. Transmute. And genetic explosives. Float white. Yeah, they can see. Yeah, that was probably not the most optimal play to make there. Cavern of Souls. Bring in those Path to Exiles. X just HS. Thank you for the follow. I want Queen. Do I want the Tusk? Do I want the Thrag Daddy? Maybe not. Yeah, I don't think I do. Uh, we can take out one trinket. Uh, Bujuki Bog. As you can see, I'm siding out Ghost Quarter and Bujuki Bog. I'm really not worried about Moreland Hunt. If we if we lose, it's not because my opponent is able to put a couple of one one tokens into play. We want all my paths. We might want one less relic. And maybe one minus one steerings. I kinda don't like Trinket Mage. Yeah, I think I want. Uh, yeah, I think I want steering sword, Trinket Mage. Different upsides to both, yes. Uh, so basically, yikes. Basically, the main differences are number one, a Tusk is not as good against the card Liliana of the Veil, vale, while Baloth is insane. I personally think uh, Baloth is better against Burn because A doesn't die to Bolt and B it uh, costs 4 mana instead of 5. Um, Tusk is better against Blood Moon decks because you can cast it, you know, we all, you only need a single green source. Man, this is a hard one. I think I'm gonna keep that on top. Um, then... Uh, Tusk trades with Gormagangler while uh, while the other guy, uh, the Veloth, just chumps. Uh, they have a lot of stuff going on, a lot of like 
reasonings for one card of the other. So you you basically just have to balance all of those reasons and currently I think that Tusk is better than than Bailoff in, in the metagame that I expect to see at GPLA at least. Oh please give me an explosives. It's not bad. If my opponent is going to sack this, please do it. Please, 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 please. Ugh. Never lucky. Uh huh. So I think we're, we're getting an amulet here. Amulet is kind of awkward, though. I think we do play it out anyway. Yeah, that's pretty good in the face of Horner Queen. That I can tell you. That I can tell you. Uh, also, my opponent is holding up, holding up a Spell Queller. Man, this is so awkward. Uh, so at this point, I think... I think I am forced into transmuting for a Simic Growth here. Which feels kind of like a waste of a Telerio West. But I'm trying to basically path the spirit and then use Hornet Queen in order to stabilize. This is so bad if my opponent has a deputy. But if they have a deputy, then they... Then they are not... Quelling me, I guess? So that's the upside. Alright, Dianthi, thanks for hanging out. Phantasmal image. I assume this copy selfless spirit. They copy wanderer. Interesting. So I pass. Then I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven mana. Yeah, this should be fine, I guess. So let's start there. One, two, three. I think I just I just slammed the Hornet Queen, right? I guess I can I can Asusa first. 
and then path the the queller. And if they have unified will, they have unified will. I can't really play around that. So let's do this. That resolved. Okay. One, two, three, four, five. Can I stabilize? If they have the disdainful stroke, that kind of stuff, I, I can't play around that. Yeah. <sighs> All right, got me. So now I need to draw a Titan, basically. That's nice, like, that basically gained me for life, which is cool, because that's one more turn. Prime time. That's not a prime time. Basically, tempting a queller here. All right, I'm gonna hold up this scout. This is not gonna be the difference between winning and losing the game, so I'm just gonna hold it in my hand to basically to hide some information. Oh, they have a company. Well, now I'm dead. Yeah, this is very much lethal, right? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Oh, this is exactly lethal. Okay, so we can go see. Rough, rough. Uh, we needed to, we needed to draw one more thread there. Shitty, pretty shitty. Uh, but let's go with this. Nah, I like Asusa better. Okay. Let's try this again. Uh, it's actually probably a keep. We want to see an amulet? Soon ish. Hopefully, the steering gets us there. This Tolaria West can become a Titan down the line. But yeah, this is definitely a keep. A slow one, but, but a keep nevertheless. So we'll need to play around Unified Will. That is good to know about, because uh, sometimes these decks, uh, lately they've been playing... <sighs> this is very hard. We need this, but we also would like to have this too. I guess I'm gonna get the explosives. We have more bounce lands than we do explosives, and even uh, even a single amulet just make makes it so that we don't really need more bounce lands. <laughs> Playing Violon 1. 
Sweet. I'm usually pretty aggressive about doing this. This kind of stuff, like um, blowing up vials and shit. This is because, first of all, my opponent played a land that is not a good land. So this, uh, this suggests that they are short on mana. And usually Aether Vial is a way that uh, the Spirits player gets a... Whoa, yeah, this, this game is probably over here. Sweet. And that is why I'm, I'm very aggressive about <laughs> putting explosives on one. Uh, maybe if my opponent had used a fetch, I would not have done that, but... I definitely want to be doing that uh, when when my opponent leads on Horizon Canopy, you know? Uh, them, lead, them leading on Canopy tells you a lot about their hand. They are clearly uh, not abundant on land drops. Uh, this hand is pretty freaking good. A Bounce Land turns, the, turns this into the nuts. Exchange the mage with two explorer because I have the feeling mage is a bit clunky and explorer is faster. Um, I will read your comment in a second. Give me, give me one second. Um, yeah, that was a nice ee. Downside is I can't find ee that fast, but the matchups where I need it desperately would be too slow. The mage anyway. Another upside might be the mage as an extra blocker. Yeah, I think mage is great. I, I personally believe that Mage is awesome, so... Whoa, is this like the Wesco deck? Uh, Craig Wesco once played an Aether Vial Serum Visions Thalia deck at... It, it was an, at an important event too, I can't remember which event, which event it was. Which was pretty funny. Uh, we lost round one to Blue Red Delver. Let's. Ah. Hmm. I kind of want to play around uh, Wanderer. So I'm going to lead on this. Because we kind of really need the bounce land here. And there it is. Sweet. Uh, we just pass here. Okay. Hopefully my opponent has some bad cards. Oh, uh, they have a thought not. That's not a bad card. Yep, that's a good card. They probably take the Esusa here. The good thing is Colony can do some chomp blocking. That vial though is gonna be tough to beat. Um, this is the deck where vial is at, at its best. Like this kind of like Eldrassi decks, especially if they are running Flicker Wisp, which I very much expect my opponent to be running. Um, Flicker Wisp is a very, very good card when you draw either Vile. It's not a good card when you don't draw either Vile. In any case, it's still pretty good against our deck in particular, and my opponent correctly takes the Asusa. Good for them. Uh, let's see if we can find... Uh, what do we want to find here? Another Asusa would be the best draw. Uh, that's not bad, actually. That's not the worst. So here, this colony is going to gain us 4 life, which is pretty good. Hopefully no Thalia, no... Arbiter. <laughs> Arbiter is always a really big pain in the ass. No Arbiter, please. Thalia. Well, Thalia is annoying, but it's not as annoying as Arbiter. 
Basically, Thalia taxes me for one mana, while Arbiter taxes me for two. And of course, being taxed for one mana is better for me than being taxed for two mana, for obvious reasons. I doubt this is going to be gaining any more than four life, so I'm gonna, you know, right away take that chomp log while I can. Okay, let's see what comes up next. Deputy of Detention. Yeah, that's that's annoying. I expect my opponent 100% to have Arbiter here. Uh, well, now with this, I think we're going to take it slow. If they have Ghost Quarter here, of course, this is a terrible play, but... One, two, three, four, five, six. So we have enough uh, Titan mana. That's a thought. Oh, that's pretty freaking good. Argus42, thank you very much for that Twitch Prime subscription. Welcome to the Primetime Stronghold, your first subscriber of the day. Thank you very, very much. Let's throw some Prime Times in the in the chat, uh, Ballista would be our best draw. Ballista would be nuts here. We kill a Thought Knot and a Thalia. And we chomp a 4-4. Four four. We gain 4. Yeah, Ballista would be amazing. Unless my opponent has uh, Spell Quellers. Well, they, might be, they might be playing. Uh, yeah, my opponent had a very, very good start here. Well, I guess I'm going to try to find Ballista here anyway. Okay, so there's the Ballista. Yeah, this Ballista is just too good on this board. Even if I play it on one, it's going to buy me enough time to to survive here. If they have Spell Queller, they have Spell Queller. Whatever. I, I can't beat Spell Queller anyway. This is pretty solid, though. So now we're going to... I think Ballista is going to do anything, everything, so I'm going to block the Thought Knot, take 3, a ping the Phantasmal image. Oh really? Sweet Argus, well yeah, hope you, hope you enjoy it, because there's, there really is a lot to enjoy with this deck. Oh damn, I realized, I just, oh, I just realized. Uh, we're still one mana short because of the stupid Thalia. There's no way I kill the Thalia here, though. So let's uh, let's think about this. So we block Thought Not, take three down to six, kill the Phantasmal Image. That's cool. Uh, let's assume my opponent has a blank in hand. Let's assume that my opponent has nothing in hand. If I if they have nothing in hand, then if I block here and I ping the Thalia on my turn, I packed for Titan. I cast Titan. I get Vesuva. Vesuva Bounce Land, probably, and I can copy Kalni again, and I can chump block the Thought Knot, and then, uh, you know, basically, well, well Thought Knots cannot attack anymore, right? Uh, on the other hand, if my opponent has a second Thalia in hand, then killing the Thought Knot is, like, infinitely better. So the question is, do I play around second Thalia? Well, I'm pretty sure that my opponent has to have. Oh, I do have a lot of play. That's what I'm saying. Like, because if I block here, I take three. This kills this. I draw a card next turn. A uh, plant chumps thought not. And I take three again, go down to three. And I uh, packed on the following turn for Titan. Uh, but I think that. I'm going to go for the riskier play. I 
I think I'm gonna go for the riskier play. I get blown out by second Thalia, but that... And honestly, it's not that crazy for my opponent to have second Thalia here, to be honest. I also get wrecked by Flicker Wisp. But I get wrecked by Flicker Wisp anyway, because they can... They can... Uh, flicker my Simic Growth. Well, that's also pretty freaking good. Yeah. So now we kind of lose. <laughs> Unless we draw like a natural titan. That's not a natural titan. Alright, got me. If I had killed the TKS, I would have drawn another card. Yeah, I guess I was dead anyway. Bring in those Path to Exiles, bring in that Thractus, bring in that Hornet Queen, and Rex Sage. No Pact, uh, we can slide out a couple of Summoners back, they're terrible in the face of Lonin Arbiter. I want the third Explosives, I probably don't want the Trinket Mages. Uh, amulets are excellent, Scouts are excellent, Azusa can probably come out one... Uh, I want all of my lands, because my opponent is playing a land destruction strategy. I probably can take out one Steerings against the Thalia deck. How's it going, Duke? Uh, one more cut. I do like Amulet, Amulet a lot in uh, these plays for matchups. Maybe we take out Relic. Just the one Relic. Uh, what's up, darling? <laughs> That's funny to say. Uh huh. Do we keep this? From uh, I was wondering what makes Trinket Mage and Collision Relic so good. Uh, Trinket Mage is very versatile. Especially in this list, running multiple explosives. Uh, and the explosive is, is pretty good right now. You can also find a threat in Walking Ballista, an answer in explosives, or a, co a combo piece in Amulet. So it's very, very flexible. I think I'm going to keep this. And I'm going to, uh, to play a uh, Crossroads on one. So next turn we can Amulet into Steerings. And Coalition Relic uh, gives you mana where... Uh, it gives you two mana without needing to hit land drops, right? All of your other ramp pieces uh, need you to actually have lands in your hand in order for them to do anything. So uh, having access to uh, an artifact that will give you two mana, especially which can be found off Ancient Steerings, it's pretty big. I'm going to play this because if my opponent has Spell Pierce, I I'd rather them counter the amulet than the Steerings. Like, we really need the land drops here. And out of all these three, I think I'm gonna get the Cavern of Souls. So this is, this is gonna be a classic, like, take it slow game. That's a Displacer. <laughs> That's an answer to said Displacer. That's funny. I'm gonna put this on Giant. Pass the turn. I don't care about this as much as I care about if my opponent thought knots me here. That I would care about. And I think I would path the thought knot instead of pathing this. Also, my opponent doesn't have access to. I think I'm actually gonna path this here. Uh, they don't have access to Restoration Angel. Restoration A Restoration Angel. There we go. Um so that's that's cool. It would have been nice to have drawn like Azusa or something like that so far. I don't like this art of path. I mean it's okay, I just really like the the you know <sighs> lion. That's my lion face by the way. Um Yeah, 
Yeah, that's... I mean, you can build whatever version you want in the end. Uh, all of the versions are pretty solid overall. <sighs> Interesting. Uh, that's actually pretty sweet. So we get blown out by Deputy here. But if my opponent doesn't have Deputy, uh, the second amulet allows me to Titan next turn. If they have Deputy, though, this is this is awful. <laughs> like, <laughs> this sets us pretty far behind. Uh, but if they don't have Deputy, I can... This Tolerius is going to untap twice because of both amulets, and I'm going to be able to Titan. So it's like a mini ramp. Don't have Deputy, please. I asked... I, I said please. Come on. All right. Uh, this uh, the the print of, of this card has been <laughs> has been pretty freaking good for this kind of like blue white uh, decks. Um. I think it's going to help us a lot and it's going to hurt us a lot because that the, the new mulligan rule kind of means that our opponents will have Blood Moon like most games basically. Venser, whoa, that's insane. Uh, we lost the game right there. Yep. Wow. I was not expecting this card. It's funny that my opponent going kind of like full meme, it's actually getting us super hard. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Oh, you gotta be kidding me. Oh, well, well this is not as bad. Well, that is actually pretty bad. Yeah, never mind. <laughs> Damn it! It was this. It was that freaking deputy that got me. Uh, that was a solid top deck, though. The Asus, I mean. Another Wisp kills us, but Celavi. One, two, three, four, five, six. Celavi. Hopefully, they just have like a Thought Node or something, and we they just take one of our three Titans. But even they could have Meddling Mage here, which would be disastrous for us. <laughs> um, you still prefer Trinket? Of course, yeah. Corsair was terrible when I tried it. Um, no, it's good even if you run 1 EE. In fact, it's probably better if you run 1 EE. Uh, yeah, I don't think it's... Uh, Mage is really good when you have, when you have only 1 EE. And to see my next draw, so to force nice body. Yeah, I I just I tested Corsair. I cast it one time in two leagues and it was awful. I I was I was not a fan. I mean you can you can check out the stream where that where that happened. It was it was not pretty. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So my opponent can ten me here. Uh, I'm here, definitely taking my free block on the deputy. If they had another wisp, another vencer, any like even this placer gets me real good. But what can I do really, right? Uh, look at dog. This is not a combo deck. <laughs> so that that statement is wrong. If if you're playing amulet like a combo deck, you're gonna lose a lot. You you cannot play amulet like a combo deck. You need to play amulet like a combo deck in some matchups. Like against storm, you need to try to approach amulet like a combo deck. But if you're playing like in most scenarios, it is not a combo deck. Please let this let this be in thought. Not please. Oh, that's... that I don't care about. One, two, three, four, five, six. They do have a Thalia. So this path is not doing anything. Way 
need a second. So I pass the deputy. Can we kill here? We might be able to get a kill here. So we pass deputy. Get both amulet back. Uh, both amulets back. We play Toleria. They untap. Uh, uh, Toleria untaps twice. We play a Titan. We get something for. Yeah, this is this is actually this was an amazing draw. And I, I disagree that Cursor is better in multiples too. Cursor is fine as a one-off. I just think that it's worse than Bayloth or Thraktusk. So I hope my my statement was not misunderstood. I think that Corsair is a fine card. It's just worse than the other alternatives we have. So we can get Simic plus Kalni here, which is nice because it gives us some blockers. One, two, I'm not afraid of any counter magic from my opponent because there's no one mana uh, card that could stop me here. And... And they have a Thalia in play. I also just realized that my opponent might be running Meddling Mage over there. And now we can do Vesuva plus Simic Growth, right? Vesuva copy Crossroads. This is nice. Vesuva copy Crossroads. Wow, this, this really blew out of proportion here. Uh, the bad thing about this, I ah oh, damn it, I just realized by getting Vesuva now I cannot haste two Titans. Uh, but I think gaining the life is pretty damn important though. And now we have one, two, three, four blockers, plus probably a Ghost Quarter, so I can answer my opponent's mutable. So they will only be swinging for three, which I can definitely beat. And I can also use this turn to transmute. Yeah, so I guess this worked out, huh? <laughs> uh, so we're gonna do Simic plus GQ. Boom, boom. I uh, guess I'm gonna bounce the stronghold so I protect it from something. Like some kind of LD or whatever. Um, hmm. I think at this point I want Ballista instead of Explosives. That sounds good. Okay. Actually, maybe I should have played the Ballista on one instead of... Instead of holding up Ghost Quarter. It's effectively the same, except Ballista kills the Flicker Wisp if I need to. That's uh, one path to exile. Yes. Uh, yeah, I, w I mean, I was expecting a path to exile. I was expecting the path to exile. So yeah, I definitely miss the fact that by getting the Vesuva, I couldn't copy the Stronghold. Um, that was that was a mistake. Yes, uh, you are. I should have played three. If I know, yeah, you're correct. I should have played the third Titan. Should have gotten Vesuva plus Stronghold. Basically, that would have allowed me to swing for eight, I guess. But it would have allowed me to get a Ballista and like actually play the Ballista and like ping my opponent and do some stuff. <clears throat> I 
I know, I know, I, I, I messed up. I messed up. I, I was I was interested in, in gaining life and I forgot that uh, the stronghold was already in play. If we don't die this turn, I'm pretty confident that we win, though. But we need to not die somehow. I guess I need to get rid of all of our blockers. All right, we we won anyway. Th that was definitely a mistake. I I repeat, that was definitely a mistake. But I mean, at that point we were we were pretty far ahead anyway. So yeah, that path draw was insane. Uh, I'm gonna go to the bathroom real quick. I'll be right back, and we'll see if we can make any changes. I don't think so, but maybe. Who knows? one point I got almost worried there almost worried um... uh, changes don't think so let's run it back my opponent gave me a well played Good guy opponents. Yes, please. This is kind of awkward, but I think I'm going to lead on Amulet here. This means I cannot turn to Azusa, but I can turn to Relic, which seems pretty damn strong. Island. What does that mean? Never mind, I can turn to Azusa. And this is nice because it also allows me to like make more land drops. This is great. Uh, for one blue mana... I guess I want to play around this member or some stupid thing like that. Sure. Uh, we're gonna bounce this. Play coalition relic. <laughs> Mumbling pipes. Good luck with that. Hope that works out for you. <laughs> uh. 
uh, so my opponent did nothing on turns one and two, and we have five. We could have had six permanents in play, but it's actually better for us to only have five. And Deputy does nothing here. They literally have no way of stopping me from tightening this turn, with the exception of Thought Knots. Opponent wisely takes the Titan. We, of course, naturally top deck one. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six. I mean, it's the good thing about playing so many of these cards, right? It's probably a concession here. I don't think my opponent can beat this. No concession, though. Uh, we're gonna do this. Can I make a massive ballista here? I feel like that 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 like that is going to be pretty important. So I can bounce Garrison again. This part is fine. Now we serve serve with Titan. I guess we get another Yeah, I'm not concerned whatsoever about my life total, so let's do this. Here we can bounce the GQ, I guess. One, two, Three. We can make a three-three ballista. I just don't want my opponent to be able to like uh, blink their thought knot somehow. And 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 take what is literally the only card they can take. So this blanks any future thought knots. This blanks uh, Displacer into Eldrassi Temple, which could also, could also be potentially bad. And now those are just... Those are simply dead draws. So I don't think my opponent can beat this. I'm gonna go ahead and say that that was a... This plus turn three. This <laughs> plus turn three. Ping one, ping two, and I'm definitely taking the land here. Over the, the one damage, that one damage would have been irrelevant in Reflector Mage. Sure, so I guess we chomp here, and then we transmute for Hornet Queen. Maybe that's enough for my opponent to concede. Uh, that's gonna be three. I guess we can play this out, right? Three... One, two, three, four, five. Oh, we can we can haste uh, the queen actually, which is nice. Uh, getting there for four. Uh, one, two. Maybe I should have maybe I should have ended the turn with two bounce lands in hand since I got two Toleria Wests. Well, but uh, actually I got bounce on Toleria, so ne never mind, never mind. This is this is fine. Um, so uh, one, two, three. This is gonna be a transmute. So we have one, two for doing this, and then we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay, so we can play one more land. So we are gonna do. We're gonna play Boros Garrison twice. Well, 
Well, I guess which one we play is kind of irrelevant, right? I'm gonna do this. We're going to transmute for Summoner's Pact. Cast Summoner's Pact. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Get Hornet Queen. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Lay out Ghost Squatter. Haste the Queen. Swing. I doubt my opponent is playing Phantasmal Image in their Eldrassi Displacer deck, so I'm not really afraid of that. And now even if my opponent kills, uh, like, Thought Knots my prime time, that would be 4 mana. And then thanks to Stronghold, the next turn we just serve, and my opponent needs to deal with one of my dudes. So this should be game over. I don't think my opponent has any outs. No, uh, the our we played against spirits earlier. They this peop, this person didn't have image. Uh, we played spirits earlier, and maybe you got confused with that. But no, they they are not playing image. Two one versus blue white uh, taxes, I guess. Oh really? Did did that happen that game? Oh right, yeah, 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 yeah. You're you're, you're correct actually. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. You're, yeah, yeah. You, you guys, you guys are correct. You guys are correct. So my bad, my bad. Well, even if they had image, it's fine because if they play image, that means that they are not uh, thought not in me, which means that they are not <laughs> they are not taking my titan. So they so then the titan wins the game. So. Gracias por tanto. For people that no, don't know... No death. <laughs> well, they were the ones that died. So it was, it was blue, white, them, dead, and taxes, I guess. Alright, very awkward hand here. Uh, but this relic is tying this whole thing together. And as, as we all know... Bujuki Bog is just the nuts in modern right now, so this is a keep. And this is what's nice about the relic, right? We we can keep a hand like this on the back of relic just because it literally fixes all of our problems. Not enough green mana, relic fixes it. Not blue mana, relic fixes it. We were playing against Shadow, so we're dead. But but yeah, <laughs> we tried. We tried. Uh, yeah, my opponent is is smart. My opponent has been watching the stream, and they are like, "Oh yeah, relic is the nuts actually." So let's take the relic. I'm playing uh, Bajuki Bog on one, so I can. Well, they are gonna fatis me, but uh, my my uh, my. What I was gonna do is I was gonna actually preemptively play the explosives on one. That's why I ran out the bog there. Trinket mage. They get trinket mage. Faithless looting. Uh, we're gonna preemptively play this on one, and we're gonna play this. <clears throat> the good thing is, like, like this card is actually not bad for us. Like, we don't really care that much about my opponent running this card and stuff. Uh, an angler would be a problem, though, which is exactly what my opponent has going on here, and maybe that's why they let me get the t they let me keep the explosives. Man, we drew no lands whatsoever. 
really unfortunate. And this bug was one turn too late. What? Why would you want... <laughs> Why would you want your Buchuki block to be exiled by <laughs> your dismember to be exiled by the Buchuki block trigger? Don't get it. Um, my opponent has one card in hand, and we can beat we can beat multiple stubs too. Unless my opponent has like main deck, yeah. Yeah, I think we got it. My opponent stuffs this. Oh, they don't, maybe. Yes, so here we're going to get a Kalni... Kalni Crossroads? I mean, this guy is lethal anyway. Well, we want a green source, though. Yeah. I'm I'm going to be Yeah, I I'm going to be a coward. Oh, next turn we can amulet anyway. So yeah, no, this it's definitely fine to be a coward here. Well, we <laughs> we just beat Shadow game one sweet. <laughs> Um, yeah, I, I guess you're correct. So we want Path, we don't want this, we want Colossus, we want Tusk. It can take maybe one or two summoner aspects. Um, we can take one Trinket Mage. Uh, man, Ballista is such... I've played this matchup so many times, and I still haven't figured out whether I want Ballista or not. I still have not figured out. There, there are situations where I'm like, I, I could like transmute for Ballista and literally win the game on the spot, but then most of the time I just, I just like draw it or something and. And then I'm I'm just like stuck playing a four mana two two that can't even ping them because it grows it would grow their death shadows, so it <laughs> ballista is a very hit or miss card. Um, uh, sweatpants. Uh, sí, eh, por supuesto, por supuesto. Eh, de nada. <laughs> Me alegra que los disfrutes. Um, Uh, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, basically, you can <laughs> yeah, you can name like uh, what would be a what would be a good name? I hope this comes up. Uh, we can name like antelope with with cavern of souls and and colossus would be uncounterable. That would be that would be so funny. Take out one scout. Um, I don't think I want horn queen. Now that I'm playing thructusk, I think this card is gonna be better at buying time. The question is, I don't think I want the third explosives. I think two is fine, because, you know, it might have what just happened might come up, which is I'm just stuck with a bunch of explosives, and then my opponent simply goes ahead and they just play a seven mana five five, which actually costs one, so... I think my opponent might be double queuing over there. Uh, yeah, we keep this. I mean, you usually end up keeping most sevens against that shadow. Like your your opening hand doesn't really matter that much because they are gonna be like shoot any two pieces. Okay. I think we play our own stuff here.
if they have like the the freaking uh, slot scour, yeah, that's that's fine, whatever. But I think playing around stub is correct there. Oh oh. Don't angler me, bro. Don't angler me the turn before I'm gonna bog you. One, two, three, four, five, six. That's a shadow, and that's an angler. Well. That's a solid turn two for my opponent. Turn two puts nine plus power into play. Well, maybe more. All right. So I can't beat Stub. I cannot beat Stub. I can probably not beat a dismember or anything like that. So this is four mana. I have access to five mana total. Which means I'm one mana short of killing these shadows. In that case. We, yeah, uh, I I'm going to suspect that we're dead here. Like we we really are dead too. Like way too many things here. Uh, Die man eighty two. Thank you very much for the for the subscription. Welcome to the prime time stronghold. Um, yeah, and this is one of those situations. I said we're at ballista. Yep, yep. So this is exactly one of those situations that I was talking about. This is not the norm really, but sometimes it just happens that you know you are in a, you are in a situation where yeah, where ballista would simply you know give you more of like a, a better chance or something and <sighs> yep. We're probably dead here. Like anything that grows, that's also lethal, right? Yeah, okay. <laughs> that's very lethal. Uh, we were dead anyway. Uh, we were going to be dead anyway. Well, my opponent's draw was like absolutely insane. They, they moved to five. And that was like such a nutty draw. That's pretty sick, <laughs> actually. <laughs> oh, you are? Sweet. Glad, uh, Diamond, yeah. Glad you're enjoying it. Yeah, I, I kind of cannot wait for, for GPLA. It's going to be awesome. Uh, I guess this is a keep. Yeah, it, that, that was insane. That was, like... The amount of pressure my opponent put into play, like, so quickly, was very, very, very impressive. Hopefully they don't have an answer for this scout. Uh, it's very close to it. It might not be exactly card for card, but it's very, very close to it. I'm trying to figure out what the last couple of slots are going to look like. Okay, uh, them, them getting my steerings there is definitely less bad for us than, than them killing the scout. I'd, I'd really need the ramp. Are you happy with any way of dealing with the weird deck? I... I don't know what you mean. What? Why would my opponent scour me? Are they trying to like spike and like surgical me? <laughs> it seems like that's what they were trying to do. Which is funny.
I guess I transmute here. For Pact. It basically forces my opponent to like need to do something about this. Shit. <laughs> okay, sure, you got it. Sometimes the dish should just have everything less than five script plus two rates and double shadow. What's up? Yeah, I mean that shadow is a pretty freaking good deck, so doesn't really surprise me. Wow, what a whiff. What a whiff there. One, two, three, four, five, six. Three. One, two, three. All right, I'm going to try to go for broke. Uh, this might be a little bit weird. This might be a little bit weird, but I'm going to try to go for broke. I feel like I'm super far behind. I have two cards versus my opponent's five. Which is a lot. So what I'm going to do is go... Uh, end of turn, I'm going to pass my scout. That will give me access to seven mana on my turn. I will Tolerio West... Transmute for Summoner's Pact and Pact for Chameleon Colossus. I guess that stops my plan. But at least I can save this D-West, which is pretty nice. Liliana? That's weird. Do I want to path myself? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. It will give me access to eight mana. I guess I don't. I'd rather have the, the Liliana minus protection here. This is actually an answer to Chameleon Colossus, so... I guess I'm going to explosives on one because we are more likely to kill this Liliana than we are to kill this shadow. Especially with now I have like two like Liliana fodder cards, so I could go after the life total actually. Maybe I should have gone after the life total there. <laughs> Uh, we're gonna sack the one that dies to my own and journey explosives. And I think here I'm going to hold the um, the forest because it protects me from call against command. Jay's Vreen's Prodigy, sure. OP going real deep there. Interesting killing that guy, so we're gonna do it. Now we have protection from shadows, so I'm going to swing. Well, this is hilarious. Are we going to get there with like trinket mage beats? Trinket Mage, too strong. <laughs> oh my god. 
That was awesome. That was awesome. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Trinket Mage Beats. Grey Ogre gets there. Alright. One more match. Yet another 4-1. It's just a sad 3-2. Echo Baronin. Uh, this is the guy that topated the the Jeep the PT. Uh, this is not a good hand. I think I'm gonna move again. And this hand is so much better. It's not even funny. Oh, that's oh, wait. Oh, that's Lampalot. I think it's. I think he often plays um he often plays um Titan Shift, I think. Ah uh, Michael Bondi's Lampadot oh, okay. Alright, my bad. Sorry. Sorry to them. I hope I didn't like make them feel bad or anything. I I doubt it. Yeah, I I knew that they 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 were I knew that they were at least that they were like from the same team. Yeah, he says. He says they are they're happy for for their friend. That's great. Yeah, man, like top hitting a PD must be so awesome. He also did it with the. <laughs> he also did it with the, the Nexus deck, which is even even more value there. Why has this... I'm just guessing, why has this league been so long? Were my opponents slow or something? Hmm. But yeah, I, I I just know that I follow this this guy on Twitter and that they they're pretty good. They they like all the time. They're like top eighting like all the challenges every freaking weekend. He's he's very very good. He's very very good. Okay. If we knew for a fact that we were playing against Titan Shift, I would top this, but uh, we n we don't, and he might have changed it or something, and I don't want to risk it. Okay, so now we know that they are not of that. We cannot relic this turn. Which is unfortunate. I think we just play the colony and yeah, uh, we play the colony with the idea of next turn. Um, okay, so now EOT. I'm going to flush in the sanctuary, bouncing the colony will give me extra champ blockers. 
Okay, so I feel like I'm getting phoenixed or something here. Damn. Okay. <laughs> oh, this is hilarious. <laughs> Now that's a turn two. All right, don't moon me, bro. Turn two Bedlam Reveler. Whoa. I wonder how many Phoenix are they discarding here? <laughs> Whoa. Damn, I really wish I had that that Bajuki bug right here. Holy crap. Don't tell me they drew a gut shot here. Darling dearest, yeah, it's here. Damn, that's insane. Uh, I would consider that definitely an above average turn two. <laughs> uh, jeez. So my options include use this turn to transmute and just like take one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Am I even winning that game? Alternatively, I can play this out. Next turn, I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight mana. I'm one mana short. I think I just need to get lucky. But if I if I use this turn to transmute, I think I'm gonna die next turn. I think I literally die next turn. If one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So any bolt kill. Yeah, I I cannot afford to do it. I still feel feel pretty freaking dead here. I might be forced into chump blocking with this and just like need to top deck a Titan. Even top deck in Titan doesn't do it at this point, really. <laughs> well... And here I was thinking that they were going to be on on Titan Shift and we would have an easy time winning this game. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So that would be nine, ten. I feel like if I'm gonna win this game, I'm going to need for this scout to survive. I honestly don't think I'm going to win this game. Let's start there. 
So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I'm one minute short, so we can just consider here. Wow, that was something else, huh? Uh, we don't want this, we want this, we don't want this. I probably want all paths, actually. Cavern, out. We want relic. Don't want trinkets. Gates, mostly for Blood Moon purposes. You can side out scouts. Let's try this. No, we don't want the triple green. A triple green card in a Blood Moon matchup. That's part of the reason why Thraktos is coming in. And one of the reasons why Tusk is better than Bailoff in this matchup. Uh, I guess I keep this. It's interesting to know that my opponent is running a Ritual. It's easier to cast under moon. It um, it is better against control. It's better, much better against shadow because it trades with angler instead of chump blocking. Uh, there are a series of reasons. <sighs> Damn. I guess we're getting the sanctuary here. I could see an argument for getting to Laria there in order to hold up Negate, but I don't want to die to my opponent. Yeah, to this guy, basically. I feel I'm running out explosives on one. Just don't turn to meme, bro, please. Uh, the Cavern of Soul is there for a bunch of decks. Uh, of course, Control, yeah, so they have a turn to Moon. I mean, I couldn't beat this anyway. I mean, I, I guess I still can. I can pack for Sage. I could not beat another Blood Moon. Oh, this is kind of hilarious, actually. I can... So I'm going to take some damage here. If they have second moon, I I lose. But if they don't, I can actually use this blood moon to ramp a little bit, which is funny. Um, it's good against control. It's good against... Um... Good against control, good against uh, uh, shadow, good against uh, spirits, good against any of those. Yeah, second blood moon beats me here, unfortunately. Yeah, my, my opponent's draws have been outstanding. Yeah. Man, if that deck draws like that every single time, it might be one of the best decks in modern, really. One, two, three, four, five. Is this going to be a reveler? Oh no, flashback looting, okay. <laughs> they find another Phoenix. This is ridiculous. <sighs> I 
I guess I should have taken the second basic forest when I... But I mean, I'm, I'm not winning that game either, right? I'm just playing like a turn 5 Thrive Tusk and my opponent is just like phoenixing me to death. I guess... Well... Yeah, we just died. I don't think we could have beaten my opponent's draw here. We could have beaten the first Blood Moon, probably. I don't think we could have beaten the second one. <laughs> All right, we three two. Um, I think this matchup is fine as long as. You know, our opponent doesn't draw like they just did. But, yeah. No, that's gonna be it for me. I have to go. I have a student uh, later today. So I'm gonna, you know, just get ready for that. Uh, I want to thank everybody for hanging out. Uh, my name is Francisco, in case you're not aware. And we play a lot of Amulet on this stream. So make sure you hit that follow button if you haven't done so yet. If you want to help support the stream, you can do so by subscribing. Um, you can get this awesome primetime emote. And we have a new emote incoming, uh, which is going to be an, a no bad matchups emote. So that's going to be sweet. I'm, I'm looking forward to that one. For the rare scenarios where we, like yesterday, we managed to be like blue black male or something like that. Yesterday we beat... Turn 2 Blood Moon on the draw uh, game. Uh, I mean, we were on the play. My opponent went turn 2 Blood Moon on the draw uh, on game 1, which was very impressive. Uh, if you want to follow me on social, social media, you can do so on Twitter. You can uh, go to uh, and follow at FFollowsMTG. Uh, if you want to f uh, join the Amulet Discord, you can do so with that link over there. If you want to uh, check out previous streams, you can do so on my YouTube channel. Um, it's I always upload them and I timestamp so you can go straight to whichever matchup you want to see. And finally, if there's any decks that you would like to see played on streams, any like spicy lists, any stuff like that, any donation that covers the entry fee of a league, of a league which is $12, you can basically send me a list on a private message and we will be... We will be playing that uh, that list on stream live, and then of course we will have some feedback and you know debriefing and everything. Hamboids, thank you for the follow. Uh, that's gonna be it for me today. I will probably be back tomorrow. I I think I will be streaming every day, every day this week because of uh, the GP coming up. Uh, so that should be sweet, and uh, we're gonna be playing some more amulets. So hope to see everybody then and have an amazing rest of the day we're going to be doing some hosting though let's see who's let's see who's playing here um uh -huh. oh sean is playing yeah we're gonna be hosting sean sean's great i love sean so what there we go. Sweet. All right. Let's go to Sean's stream. See everybody over there. Bye-bye.